In this presentation, we will pay payroll taxes within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view tab up top and open uh, windows list drop down that'll give you the open windows what we're going to do is go down to the employees section and we're going to be paying the payroll liabilities before we do so let's think about the payroll process and how we get these payroll liabilities and then we can think about what this little widget is doing so note that within the payroll we're going to have these items these three items set up in payroll if payroll is set up within quickbooks in other words if we've purchased some type of payroll system within QuickBooks or if we set up the manual payroll. We here have set up the manual payroll. That's a free payroll option that you can set up. It's very good for practice uh, to practice payroll. I don't recommend setting it up unless you have a very simplistic payroll system or someone to, to help you uh, do the payroll because it will then have to do the manual calculations for each employee for things like federal income tax, Social Security, and Medicare. This is going to be great practice for us because it gives us an idea of what these taxes are, how the system would be calculating them. But it's a better check and it's you're safer to have QuickBooks or some other system calculate those for us so that it can pull that information from the tables and we don't have any kind of math errors in pulling that information from the tables. So the manual system is great, however, for practice. If you don't see these three icons at the bottom, then it's probably the case that we don't have the payroll set up. If you want to take a look at what the payroll options are, you can set, you can take a look at the turn on payroll here to see what the options are within payroll. You can also look at a prior presentation where we go over some of the payroll options within payroll, as well as there's a lot of options outside of payroll, meaning payroll is becoming more specialized. We may want to get a third party to help us out with the payroll, payroll professionals that just do the payroll. So we have the manual set up set up here. We have entered payroll for the first month of operations for uh, January in our example problem and we're going to then pay them in February. Note what the process here is that we're going to pay the employees with this icon but as we do so we're only going to give the employees a net check. So in other words if we select this item and we go to our employees let's actually go through a payroll check so we're going to close this back out Go to the reports up top, reports drop down. We're going to go to company and financial and go to the balance sheet standard. And then we'll change the date range up top from customized report. And we will go from 010119 to 123119. That's the period we are working on, the year we're working on. Okay. Now, if we go down to the payroll liabilities that we will have on the balance sheet, this is what we're actually paying. So here are the payroll liabilities. We need to pay those liabilities. Where did those come from? If we select those or double click on them, then we'll see that we have these two employees that we have been paying. We've paid these two employees just for January. We're paying them on a monthly basis in this example problem. We may be paying them uh, in practice in different types of formats, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, monthly. monthly. If we double click on one of these items, we'll get the detail of the check. Now, if we want to see more check detail, I'm going to go to check details here. And this is what happens when we enter the check. So we have the check amount, in this case, a salaried employee. And then this is the stuff that you will populate pretty much automatically if we have this payroll system properly set up and we are paying for some portion of payroll. If we don't have the system set up, then we have to manually calculate and enter these as we did in a prior presentation which is great practice because then you get to actually see how the net check is being calculated and see what the difference is between employee payroll taxes and employer payroll taxes. So these three items are what we took from the employee. This is what the employee earned. We took federal income taxes. Uh, that's going to be what they owe to the Fed, what they're going to report on their 1040, not our taxes, not our federal income taxes that we will have on our tax return but the taxes on their taxes their earnings and then the social security and medicare which are fica taxes those are the payroll taxes that are taken out of their check 
and that means that they only got a net check of 3539 and we kept the rest. Now, we kept it. We don't get to keep it for good. We're paying their taxes. This is the employee's taxes. This is Adam Hamilton's taxes, our employee's taxes, not ours. If we keep their taxes and don't pay the government for them, we're not only not paying our taxes, we're not only not paying our payroll taxes, we're in essence stealing from them because they earned 4583 and this is their money, which we are entrusted as the business to take and we're forced at the same time to take and give to the government. And so we have to pay that out. That's part of what is making up the payroll liability. The other part is what we had to pay on top of it, meaning these are not taken out of the payroll of the employee, but are over and above what we paid the employee. In other words, after we pay the 720, the 280, and the 66, we will have paid the full wages that were promised to Adam of 4000 583 just not all to adam but all either to adam or on adam's behalf for adam's payroll taxes these are going to be over and above what we are going to pay adam because we had to pay payroll taxes on these are taxes on adam's information so that means that the amount owed is going to be these three federal taxes and these state taxes this is going to be a simplified problem here we're not going to, we're not dealing with these aren't state taxes these are the employee and the employer and these are these are both federal taxes and we're not going to deal with any state taxes here the the concept would be the same it would change from state to state and again if you get more expensive software within quickbooks quickbooks will be able to calculate more of those automatically uh, and payroll is an area you probably want to get help with as well so if we close this back out and close this back out we'll see that this liability then is being built up from the checks. As we create the checks, QuickBooks will then calculate the payroll liabilities. We will uh, debit the amount or increase the payroll expense for the expense for the entire check and we'll credit what was taken from them in this liability account. Now, it, it's going to depend in terms of when we have to pay the liability in terms of where we are at and how much our liability is. So you're going to want to know when is the payroll liability due. In other words, and we are on a monthly payment for January, so we're going to say that we're going to pay that monthly payroll that we owe, that we took from the employees and our portion, in sometime in February. If we had bi-weekly, if we paid every two weeks, or if we paid every week, if our payroll is larger, it's more likely that we have to pay payroll taxes closer to the pay period in, closer to the time that we withheld the payroll. If our payroll is less, we don't have a lot of payroll, then it's more likely that we don't have to pay payroll taxes. We may only have to pay monthly or possibly even quarterly. So it just depends on when we're going to have to pay the payroll taxes. But we want to make sure that we know whatever system we're using, what that system is. Meaning, in our case, we're going to have January payroll collected in January, processed in January. It's owed in February. And then whatever payroll is processed in February, we're going to pay in March. Also note that if you have any problems because of that system where you have to go back and change payroll after the payroll tax has already been paid, then that can cause problems because now our payroll is going to be off most likely if there's any changes. For example, if we paid payroll taxes already for January, we go back in here and adjust the payroll in January, then we're going to have an issue with our payroll taxes and we're going to have to amend the payroll taxes in some format. So be very careful going back in time and adjusting something like payroll, it would be better to make any adjustments, any mistakes, if the hours were too less or too many, it would be better to try to, to adjust that in future paychecks to cause less problems than to go back and try to fix prior paychecks after the time in which you have paid the payroll taxes related to it. So changing any data in the past, be very careful, especially with payroll. Now, paying this is going to be pretty straightforward. If, you, if we look at this, we can just say, oh, it's a liability. All we're going to do is write a check. We're going to write a check, and then we're going to write the other side to whoever we owe, the, the IRS, in this case, the government, and that should pay this. And that's one, and we could, of course, do that. But we're going to try to use QuickBooks' little system to do that and help manage the dates a little more easily. Also note that this payroll liabilities could be for multiple types of areas. In our case, we only have the federal taxes, federal income tax, Medicare, Social Security, but it could be the case that we have state taxes and other areas we need to pay 
and possibly have to write multiple checks to multiple different areas uh, for this one liability here because we owe different vendors depending on the states that we owe and the government agencies we owe for the payroll taxes. Also note that payroll taxes is an area where sometimes it's required to have an electronic payment. So we need to make sure that we know whatever system is appropriate that, that the government will allow, whether that be electronic payments or any kind of payment stubs that we're going to need to issue along with the payments. So now we're going to pay this by going to the Home tab over here. And so we've processed payroll, and now we're going to go to the Pay Liabilities. So we'll select the Pay Liabilities. And we're going to get this window, select the date range for the payroll liabilities you want to pay. Base your dates on the dates of the paychecks you issued, not on your pay period dates. So we're going to say it's dates here. We, we're going to pay for the first month. So we paid it in the end of January. So I'm going to say from 010119 to, to uh, 013119 for the month of January, which we're going to pay in February. So we want to pick, take the pay periods that were in January and pay them in February. And that's going to be the system that we have set up for our particular circumstances. So we'll say OK. And so we're going to say, do we want to print the checks? We're, we're not going to print the checks in our example problems. If we were to print the checks, then of course, we would have this here. We would put the checks, the pre-printed checks in the printer in the proper format, and we could print all the checks at one time. I'm going to close that. Review liability check to enter expense and penalties or create liability check without reviewing. Uh, we'll keep the review on as a double check. It's going to come out of the checking account. The date that we're going to write the check, which would be the current date in our practice problem, is going to be 02-28-19. And it's going to go by sort by payable. So we could adjust the sorting here. And then the custom dates show payroll liabilities. We, this is the same date range we had prior input, so we're going to keep that date range. It also gives us some other liability reports, including the payroll liability report. These could be found as well under reports and going down to the employee and payroll. So if we were to select this payroll liability report, it'll generate a report for us for the payroll liabilities, including federal withholding, Medicare, Social Security, uh, fed federal unemployment, and then Medicare and Social Security. These are the same. Why are these here twice? Because there's an employee portion and an employer portion. So the, they're the same amount, but they're being paid twice, one by the em employee, supposedly, and one by the employer, supposedly. So we're going to close that back out. Okay, then we're going to select these items. So we're going to select these, and it's going to say a payroll item has not has no liability agency. So I'm going to say, okay, that's going to be the vendor that we're going to have to pay. So I'm going to say, yeah, set that up. And it's going to be the federal withholding. Payroll item is inactive. No, we're going to say next. Enter the name of the agency uh, which the liability is paid. This could vary depending on our, our circumstances. I'm just going to go to the Internal Revenue Service at this point. I'm going to give it a quick add instead of setting up the entire information just to have the name for it. So we'll go to the quick add. It's going to add as a vendor. Liability account is going to be payroll liabilities. So the default is the one we want. So I'm going to say OK. Uh, taxable compensation. Select the items that will increase wages for calculating federal withholdings. I'm going to keep these there. Those are two payroll items, either salary or hourly. And we're going to say finish. We're going to go ahead and check off all of these items. Now note you might have to go through that same process to check these off and the QuickBooks may want a different vendor for each of them. So if you select the same vendor such as the IRS, you, you may have to distinguish between them in some format uh, in order to track these by, uh, by whether they're Medicare, Social Security or uh, federal income tax. You may need a distinct vendor. So then we're going to check all these off and notice of course what we have is the federal withholdings. That's what we took from the employees. Uh, to pay their payroll tax, their federal income tax, what they pay on the 1040 at the end of the year. And then the Medicare for the employee, the Medicare for the employer, the Social Security for the employee, the Social Security for the employer. This doesn't mean that it's the employer's Social Security, the company's Social Security and Medicare. It means that we're, it's kind of like a matching. It's set up kind of like a retirement plan where the employee puts a portion in and the employer matches it. So in this format, the whole thing isn't the same as a retirement plan in terms of how it pays out or anything. But as far as the money going into it, 
it's similar to a, a, re, a retirement plan in that we have this kind of matching idea. So that's going to be it. We're going to say go ahead and create up top. And we will create that. And it'll then have these paychecks here. So this is for the withholdings. And we're going to say save and close. And it's, it's giving us a review of these checks now because we told it to review it. So we'll say save and close. And that's going to be the information. Now if we go back to the checking account, which I usually would double check these items. We're going to go to the banking and use register. And then checking account, that's the one we want. So we'll select that item. And then we can see there we have the internal revenue service here for these three items, these three checks we made. Once again, it gives us a special label here. It's a liability check. So, and that's going to tell us that it is a check, but it's for, you know, special purpose here. We paid the liability. If we double click on this item, then it will go to the check that we have. So here's the check that we have. Notice in the memo, it wrote our, this is our federal identification number. So that's often, if we were to print the check, it would be printed on the check. And that's something that the IRS typically needs anytime they're going to get uh, anything from us we're just a number to them so they're gonna need that number that's our identification number as the company and so then we can see it's set up and it's just a normal check here that uh, would be written but written with that special widget and notice too that it's expenses and payroll liabilities so this is kind of like the items tab that was is normally here but now it's payroll liabilities so it's a little different if the way the check is formatted by going through that kind of widget that we're using so if we close this back out we see the same for these other checks of course and then if we go to our balance sheet we're going to say what happened if we go up to the checking account and double click the checking account we will then see those those checks should have been written so if we scroll down here there are our checks and notice again it's a check all it is is a check here's a check number but now we've got the special name again it's a liability check that we have a liability check here as opposed to a check that was used to pay a bill as opposed to just a check that we just wrote so they're all just checks but this is a special check and if we double click on any of these we'll go to the check that we had this is the federal withholding check that we paid for the federal withholding this is the the one for medicare employer and employee portion and this is the check we wrote for to the Social Security employer and employee portion. Closing those out, we're then going to look at the other side, which is going to be the payroll liabilities. And it's gone. Why is it gone? Because it's now zero. Now, note that payroll liabilities won't always be zero or be gone because it's possible that we had processed payroll for February before we paid it. It just depends on how the system's going to be set up. So we just want to make sure that we know the time periods that cut off for when we are paying. In our case, we have the first month, and then we pay the liabilities for the first month and the second month, and then we process the second month, pay the employees, and pay the liabilities in March. So if we want to find that account to see the detail, a couple ways we can do that. We can go to the View tab up top. We can go to, not the View tab, we can go to the Lists tab and go to Chart of Accounts, and then go down to the Liabilities section, and we've got the uh payroll liabilities here currently at zero if we double click it then we'll see our options and there's our liability checks if we double click any of these checks we'll see those items we see the it going down to zero here the other way the other report we could use is go to reports up top go to accounting and taxes and the trial balance this is more of an accounting type report if we select that item and change the date range from 010119 to 123119. We get our information again, and that typically will show us uh, the liability here because there was there was information in it during the time period we're covering, so that if we double click on it, we'll get that transaction detailed report and we'll get these liability payments. So those are gonna be the payment items. Notice it's breaking out uh, by item here. So we can see the, the 77 here that we paid and the, and the 33, the 307 and the 307. So it's kind of breaking it out by item and not by check because we got the two checks for, for the employer and employee portions. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.